As a professional dancer, at the age of 33, I tried for the first time to juggle with four balls. For three weeks, I dedicated one hour a day for practice. But despite all of my effort, I just couldn't keep the balls in the air for more than eight seconds. I really believed that this was the best I could do. I was frustrated. I decided that I just didn't have that ability. I gave up. Two years later, I was asked to choreograph juggling numbers. During the three months of this production, I decided once again to try to practice with four balls. This time, to my surprise, I succeeded in keeping the balls in the air for more than two minutes. I felt great. I realized that the change was due to persistence of practice. It was one of those eureka moments for me. I truly understood that capability is dynamic and can be changed through persistence and practice. This experience had a great influence on my life. It actually changed my profession. From that moment, I regarded juggling as a tool for developing learning skills, and I use it today as a juggling teacher, helping my students to achieve similar insights about themselves. Wouldn't it be wonderful to know how to practice in order to achieve the best results in the shortest time possible? It would save us a lot of frustration and time. Well, we don't know, don't know the answer yet, but we are on the right track. The change in the ability that Mickey just talked about is actually a change within the brain. Immediately after learning, connections are formed between neurons, creating new neuronal networks. This is true for all types of learning, for learning how to juggle with four balls, but also learning history or mathematics. Our ability to retrieve the information and use is dependent on the strength of these connections. But how does it happen biologically? What is the relation between our behavior and the neurons inside our brain? This is what neuroscience science is about, and it is truly fascinating. This is why I studied it for 10 years. But after completing my PhD in cognitive neuroscience, I decided to move from research to practice. I decided to become a teacher. This wasn't e easy, but it was very interesting. Gradually, I discovered that my point of view as a cognitive neuroscientist on learning processes is unique and potentially very useful. It surprised me that the two fields, neuroscience and education, were not really related. And so I found my role as a communicator, bridging between these two fields. I teach the basics of neuroscience to students and teachers and how this knowledge is relevant to what they do, teaching and learning. This is the emerging field of neuroeducation. We met less than two years ago at the Rama School for Gifted and Talented Children in Ramata Sharon. I taught a juggling course and a fat a course about brain science. When we met, we started talking about the relation between juggling and the brain. I asked Efrat if she could tell me something from neuroscience that would be useful for juggling training. And she told me something that changed my perspective about learning. Everyone knows that we need to rehearse in order to remember or train in order to master a skill. But according to the spacing effect, a scientifically established principle, it is also important to devote time for breaks. You may be asking yourself, if I have a limited time, why won't I use it all for learning? Why spend time on doing nothing? So here comes the explanation. When we are learning or training, our neurons inside our brain are active. Immediately afterwards begins a process of forming connection, stabilizing the memory. This stabilization is essential for later retrieval. But if we activate the same neuronal network again by a second immediate rehearsal, 
we actually interfere with the stabilization of the previous one. Interestingly, Kelly and Watson published in, two, in 2013 a, a report about the a, application of spacing effect in the classroom. They designed biology lessons composed of three very intensive learning sessions, up to 20 minutes each, with two 10-minute breaks in between. This model proved to be very, very effective. When we discussed the potential benefit for juggling, we decided we had to try it. With the support of Odelia Cohen Oppenheim, the principal of Rama School for Gifted Children, we started a unique collaboration, a joint juggling and brain science course for middle school students. We decided to let our students investigate their own juggling training in order to reveal effects like the spacing effect or any other effects. In order to do that, we had to consider how to measure motoric skill improvement. To get an idea, let's try an exercise together. Hold your right hand in the air. And now let's draw a square. Simple, go down to your right, up and close, one, two, three, four. Very good. <laughs> now, let's draw a triangle with your left hand. Let's draw one to your left and close. One, two, three. Very simple, yes? But now we are going to do it simultaneously. I will count slowly till 12, and you should reach the starting point with your bow's hand. Let's try it. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I notice a bit of frustration. Let's try it again. I'll give you two tips. Try to reflect my movement and think about the exception, the diagonal with your left hand. All the other sides are the same. Let's try it. With me, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, 11, 12, great job, thank you. So, what can we measure here? We actually thought about it for a while, considering several options, before coming up with a simple, effective, and elegant solution, or so we think. Here is our student, Daniela, performing the same exercise for the first time, with small LED lights on her fingers. You're looking at a picture taken with a very long shutter speed of 13 seconds in this case. So you can see the path drawn by both of her hands in separate colors. This is a very useful tool to visualize the skill improvement. This is Daniela again, doing the same thing after 10 additional repetitions. We use the same method with juggling. For example, juggling with three balls. Try to follow my hands, okay. This is me doing the same thing with LED lights in my hands and blue luminous balls. Notice the stable pattern of the hands. And this is our students. <laughs> Daniel, at the beginning of his first office training, and you can see the lack of pattern, and you can't even see him because he was constantly moving, and you can even see him reaching for the ball that fell. And this picture was taken after only one hour of training. And after Daniel saw the first picture. And this picture is after another six weeks of training. The improvement in his technique is obvious. This is our student Vash, also training juggling with three balls. And you can see her improvement over the weeks. 
She also documented her practice by writing down the number of successful catches she managed to do every time. And you can see this data on the chart here. You can see her gradual but very nice improvement in both measures. Our students now have the research methods. They can even extract quantitative data from the pictures in order to compare different practice methods. We even have some initial but very promising results from juggling regarding the spacing effect that support the advantage of the 10 minute breaks. But taking one step back, this process of investigation by our students provided us with some unexpected insights education-wise. Juggling is obviously fun, but this is just the outer layer. Many times, students must face their insecurity and frustration. One of our students came to me during the first lesson last year and said, Miki, I will never succeed. I can't even juggle one ball. After some persuasion, he was willing to try with two balls. He improved a lot in just one lesson. But the same thing happened again with three balls. And again, he made an enormous progress juggling with three balls. And he couldn't deny it because the numbers were in front of his eyes. At the end of the semester, the great change in him was clear, and it wasn't just about juggling. As he put it in his own words, now I feel that I can face any challenge. Isn't it a good reason to wake up in the morning and go to work? <laughs> Our collaboration was an enlightening experience for me, different from what I have seen so far in my classes. It was clear that when the students take the role of the investigator, dedicated to documenting their own progress, they are more committed to the learning process and motivated to persist. When they see the change in their own eyes, in the colorful pathways and in the numbers, they simply can't ignore it. Seeing is believing, and believing changed the way they learn, making it much more significant and efficient. The scientific investigation and the visualization tools set in motion a positive feedback loop. Motivation encourages persistence, and persistence over time leads to success that eventually will promote a confidence in their own ability. This confidence motivates them to persist, not just in the juggling. This was an insightful experience, and it was just the beginning of the process. I truly believe in engaging students and neuroscience-based research that can be applied in all fields of learning. After this initial process of self-investigation, students understand their, their own learning processes. They get curious and motivated to ask questions and answer them through research. For example, what is the optimal interval between two learning repetitions? These answers, the answers they get from the research, are relevant to them and can be applied immediately, for example, for developing learning strategies that will eventually improve their achievement. At the end of the day, they understand, they really understand how to learn and they gain confidence in their own abilities. Our collaboration brought us farther than we ever imagined. We took our two individual colors and combined them into a new inspiring blend. We are constantly learning about the learning process, getting excited every week about new ideas and directions. Let your students investigate themselves. They find meaning and they gain confidence. Thank you. Thank you.